Okay, so the good news is um, what I was attempting to do seems to be an overall uh, success. Um, the bad news is that um, uh, to do this software PWMing, I'm um, using timing, which is pretty close to the rate of execution of a loop uh, straight up um, in the Arduino. So I'm using a, um, a loop in the program of a thousand steps and um, that thousand steps represents about the, the amount of time that uh, the, the eye can respond properly to the PWM. Um, I tried scaling that up. I didn't know like, how many instructions it would take for a certain time period. And I tried scaling that up and um, I got into all kinds of problems. So what happens here is my Arduino has uh, had the, the, the software uploaded, the little program I made. Um, I was kind of amazed because I actually got it done in about an hour last night. I wasn't expecting it was going to you know, happen so easily. But um, what happened was at this point, uh, I have something I call uh, white. So I'll go over here, take this is the, um, the string that's going into the USB that is going to make my Arduino do something. So this is color here. I call that color white. I've looked at it. The problem is it has red glue. You can see the individual emitters. And because of that, it's kind of hard to, to, to tell. But you see, the thing about these additive color system is that they need to mix in some way. Um, you may have to zoom out or something. That it has to appear to mix the, the, the uh, colors. Since we have individual, if you look at a TV screen really close, you see these red, green, and blue pads, right? So you have to sort of get out a little bit. So here you can see a little bit of diffusion on the, uh, the edges of the connector. And um, to me, that's, I was looking at it and say, you know, it's what I always do. The red was the dimmest one because it had like a resistor value that was a little bit higher because I didn't have like exactly the right one. So it kind of suffered, right? So what happened was I, I made the red the um, the 1000 and then I found out what how much of the other ones do I need. So it looks like in this case, um, I need uh, a green 200 where the red is a 100 and the blue is 210. So um, having input values from 0 to 255, um, I'm going to have uh, missing gray levels of some sort. So that's not a big problem. I, mean, I would have been happy with 64 gray levels or something uh, for these. So it's not horrible. I don't know if the performance is going to be as good or as, as linear as uh, the, you know the number I put in will have a linear response or somehow a gamma response or something weird because of the, the uh, switching time. Anyway, so you can see how it happens here is these codes correspond to the primary. So there's your red primary. Whoops, ah, not getting this. There's your green primary. And these are all adding, these are all supposedly these, the equal intensity as to give you the, the white, right? So um, those were the defining the, uh, the white values, but uh, let's just put in some more here, some just random numbers. I don't think I, I had the most, I didn't find the most ex exciting ones. I just put in anything. Okay, so maybe I was trying to uh, define the white one before. Okay, a lot of these are like, um, I guess this one's like um, centering on the red and the, the blue, so it's probably gonna be like a violet of some sort. So um, over here, what I did was I made uh, the code. This is the, uh, the start of the, the uh, string, the Y, and then there's a zero to 1,000, or the gray levels, and there's R, G, B, it's an integer, and the Z means um, I'm done, right? So at the, I'll go over how the program works in just a sec. But uh, in a way, I did make very exciting examples here to show you. Here's maybe another one. Copy. This is going to be, I don't know, we'll find out. Yeah, nothing too exciting. So I can make my own right here is uh see what we want red so what i want to make uh it's kind of what was the um just a sec so let's see what what's yellow red is what's yellow is green green plus red okay so let's let's go back to the the yellow code is uh two two hundred i believe so in theory, so I have to get my zeros in the right place. Okay, I think it's here. Okay, so let's see if we can get a yellow. I mean, in a way, it's not exciting because that's like what everyone would do. Then I get like a dimmer yellow. So actually, if I yeah, I'm gonna have to put both of them down. So let's say I divide by half. So this would be this should be like a dimmer zero 
five, 100. So this should be the same thing, but half as bright because I'm doing the PWM dimming, right? Yeah, like that. Okay, well, I have my um, my Wacom uh, pen here and a um, little tiny, tiny tablet, which has never really worked great. But um, let's say we have here, okay. This will be, oh gosh, yeah. This is, we'll call this um, a little too stylistic there, time. So this is some time, let's say it equals um, 20, MS, do you say it's MS? I think you say it's 20 MS. So something around 20 MS. So what we're really doing is, um, it's actually logic low, but we'll just say logic high so it doesn't confuse everyone. So let's say in this time period, you start out and you say for a certain, you know, certain color, it's on like that much and then it's, it goes back. So this is the on state here, right? Now, let's say you have another, another intensity of the same thing, right? So in that case, it would go like maybe here. So let's say you have um, a lesser intensity, right? So you, you just switch it at a lower time period and this repeats over and over again. So this is the idea of pulse width modulation. You had called something complicated, like pulse width modulation. But really what you're doing is you, I think people would call it duty cycle. And um, this is something indicative of your eyes is your eyes tend to blend this sort of thing. So. You know, if you have a, you know, something like a camera, it might not be tricked by this, but people are tricked by this. And this is a digital way that you can, um, you can dim something, right? You just give it a lower duty cycle, lower and lower duty cycle, this, this area here. And uh, it gets dimmer as you go. So um, I decided to use um, some of the ideas of my other program. And my other program kind of like stored up some information and then it would say, I have all my information and dump it out. And I thought what that does is it creates um, a part before this um, duty you know, control of the cycle. So what I had to do is I had to somehow mix these two things together. And I guess in a, a multitasking operating system, you might have two different threads and one could be you know, the controlling thread. Yeah, the, the thread that sets the other one that's always loopy, but this isn't immediately a multitasking device. So um, what, the way it works is there's two parts of the program as usual. There's the, um, the setup part, right? So basically it's saying set up the serial port, um, set up the modes of some of the pins, uh, set up the initial values of some of the variables. Then we're into a loop, right? And what the loop does is it goes from zero to 1000. Um, and uh, at some point it switches um, off the thing uh, you know, it might uh, start start and then it switches it off as per the value given to the program, right? So the idea is, that, you know, you can control the duty cycle and then you would get a, um, the smaller the, the number given, the, the dimmer the thing would become. So um, let's see, as in the main loop that's looping all the time, this is the main loop, what it's doing is it's um, seeing if there's uh, something going into the serial, um, something going into the Arduino through the serial port and it's sort of building up um, some information. And when it gets to the Z part, it starts um, transferring that into the uh, variables. So but it does, it copies the variables at that point. And it also resets the loop to zero. So um, that, that cycle would then restart uh, pretty much maybe the next cycle after this particular one here. So um, then what happened, let's see if I got anything. Um, there was um, a contingency here to sort of um, make more uh, loop steps and a, a scaling factor, but I found that um, a scaling factor of 10 even was perceptible. You could see it with your eyes that there is some sort of oscillation there. So I'm lowered it to one and that means that this only works at a frequency similar to the execution frequency of the Arduino itself or the, the Arduino Nano, but it does work. It seems to work pretty well. So um, what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm going to make um, probably a program that you know does some things, but it's going to mor morphize from one color to another. And I was thinking of, of you know selecting random colors that are certain you know differenceness, not adjacent or you know not close together, 
but um, are a little different and then somehow moving between those colors moving to another color so that's the next thing it has to uh, do with um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to calculate the magnitude of a vector I'm making a, a 3d color cube I need to find the magnitude of a vector and then I need to propagate along a vector at a certain number of steps and then I need to approximately go over the edge and then that would be a new point to find the next point so it isn't impossible you know and um, obviously I have a framework uh, of a program that feeds information through a serial port I've already done that so I just have to copy around and uh, figure out how the math of that's going to work and um, it's not it's not inconceivable I think the most the hardest part of it's probably done right now